great actually to have a police officer talking like this instead of get the hell out of here. Sure. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Chef Sarah from the Police Hills Road here with Captain Mike Herb. Mike? Forest Grove. Forest Grove. Well, I'm with Police Hills Road. Got He's you. with Forest Grove. <laughs> Uh, Captain Micker, uh, PIO for Forest Grove Police, is just uh, telling me and Bob here um, about their policy on uh, police accountability and uh, cop watching. <laughs> Good enough. No, I was just explaining to both of you guys that our department is all about transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, we need more of it in government. Um, our police department uh, uh, sets out to uh, uh, have po positive interactions and engage with our community. You know, we know. Uh, that the public knows that we have uh, a difficult job to do and at times we're not making everybody happy with the things that we got to mm -hmm. do but but we need to be doing things all the time by the book and we need to be following the law and we need to we need to be accountable so i have no trouble uh, talking to anybody that wants to uh, have a conversation about police accountability about uh, the jobs that we're doing and about uh, folks that that want to have uh, the insurance that we're doing our job the way that we're supposed to be doing it. No issues with it whatsoever. But I'm happy to answer any questions either one of you have. How's your body camera program going? The sergeant whose name I've forgotten already, I believe his first name is Mike, but I forgot his uh, surname, but it's talking about your body camera program and how that's going pretty well and how the footage he's received from that program has helped him to, or at least the department to exonerate a few officers who were accused of you know, shenanigans. Yeah, we've exonerated seven complaints against made against officers who we were able to review the video and, and show that what the accused or the accuser alleged happened didn't actually happen. Um, and we've had uh, a reduction in complaints. And I think that, uh, you know, perhaps uh, looking across the nation, if you were to look at other body worn camera programs, you might probably see similar. Uh, results and is that because uh, maybe some of the changes are being made at the officer level as well? It's, it's, it's certainly possible, uh, but I think folks once they know that uh, it's a two-way street, they can report us. But now we're wearing cameras and record them. And everybody, I think, is being held to their to their best behavior. Awesome. Yeah, I'm with Film the Police 911, and one of our Paul, one of the things that we really like try to encourage people is to film the police at inter any interaction but we also would like to see the police have um, cameras but not ones that they would turn off like on a, on a call yeah we don't turn the cameras off uh, if we are now the exception would be if we're inside a home mm -hmm. there's something very sensitive it's being reported on child abuse or, or a sexual assault um, if the person says I'd really like to have this not be on camera well then we will say on camera all right, uh, this person's asking that we turn the camera off. We're going to now turn the camera off. But if we uh, are engaging in any kind of enforcement action, mm -hmm. the, the, the officers wearing the cameras need to have the camera on, period. What kind of disciplinary action is there for someone who works to turn the camera off? If they were doing so intentionally to avoid having something videotaped, they didn't want videotaping, they want videotape, then, uh, then, then we're talking about rather serious discipline, if it's something they're intention, intentionally doing. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something that they've forgotten to do, uh, well, we, we don't want to come down on people that have really just innocently forgot to turn the camera on. Mm -hmm. But if that's happening three, four, five, six times in a row, well, then we would become concerned mm -hmm. that maybe, maybe somebody's doing that on purpose. And how, um, how long does the camera run before you got to recharge it? It'll go all shift. All shift. Yeah. What what cameras do you guys use? We're using so right now we're in the middle of a we we actually had a pilot program that started in May of last year ended October but we didn't stop using the cameras we're still mm -hmm. going to present all of this data to our our council and let them decide whether they want to spend the money on it um, but we're still using the cameras that we have so I don't know if one of the officers had one today that you were out with or not but uh, there are three of them that are being used right now in our department. He said they had three active. He wasn't equipped with one, but yeah, he said there were three active cameras. Mm -hmm. um, a question for you that's sort of along the same lines, more or less, at least kind of the audience interactions with the citizens. Would you agree, disagree, or say there's some merit to that the idea of that uh, culture of police professionalism that's been developing since the 70s has left a divide between the citizenry and the police and created sort of a us versus them mentality in some cases? I 
I think if you look across the nation, there are examples where that's happening. Yeah, sure. And I think that um, I think the police departments uh, <laughs> need to be doing a better job of of showing the public that we are transparent in in the, in the commission of our police duties. Mm -hmm. um, now I'll also tell you that I think there's been a backlash, an unfair backlash against police, um, mm -hmm. and it's because of the things that we've seen across the nation, the, the post Ferguson mm -hmm. uh, stuff. Um, I think that the, statist the, the, the statistics show that uh, the majority of police officers are doing the job in the way that uh, it, it, it's honorable. Mm -hmm. I think that they're honoring the badge and they're doing the job the way that, that they're supposed to be doing. Well, what makes news and what, what sticks out? Well, it's, it's the few that make a mistake and that mm -hmm. tarnish that badge. And uh, I think then that what we do is we paint uh, with a very broad brush uh, cops in general yeah. that, are, that they are, they discriminate and they are, um, you know, they, they're uh, without impunity and they, they are out there uh, targeting minorities and I, I don't believe that's, that the stats support that mm -hmm. by any stretch. I think that, that we have unfairly taken a backlash um, of late. Mm -hmm. But having said that, and to your point, I think that over the years, if you, especially if you go back to the 60s and 70s, you know, neighborhood watch and community policing, those became buzzwords back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of all of the unrest and everything that was going on, uh, police departments really needed to make an effort to reach out to their communities. So uh, I, I can tell you that our agency has set forth very, mm -hmm. very uh, clear, definitive outreach programs, copy, copy with the university. We just, did a, we just did a copy with a cop on the university. We had a student that were and said, well, we, we shouldn't have been on the campus. Um, they should have had a debate. We, would have, we should have had a debate uh, first. Mm -hmm. And we were there just to, hey, get to know the students and say, hey, you know, do you have questions of us? And I had some ask questions. Hey, do you guys have the right to do this? Like, if you come knocking on my door, do I have to let you in? Mm -hmm. uh, what circumstances, you know, would I have to let you in? Or when could I tell you, no, you can't come in? And I, I told them the truth. Well, why would I... Uh, know, the, mm -hmm. know the law, understand your rights. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I don't have probable cause, and if I don't have a search warrant, and if I don't have any other means uh, or, or the right to be somewhere, uh, I, I, will let, I will let the person know mm -hmm. if they've got a question about that, that uh, no, I don't have the right to do that. What, what should somebody do on a street situation when they in contact with an officer and, and they know or feel like they are being violated? You don't fight the issue there. You go along with what the officer is telling you to do. We see too many examples of when someone says, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this right now. I'm gonna resist arrest mm -hmm. right now. And that ends up very badly. Um, the, you get, get the name of, of the person that, that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, carefully uh, uh, recount everything that occurred and then file that complaint if you feel that your rights were violated or if you feel that you were unfairly treated or unfairly, uh, uh, if you were uh, charged with something or arrested for something mm -hmm. falsely, make that complaint later to an administrator at the agency. Uh, you, it's unlawful to resist arrest even if the arrest is unlawful. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to, folks need to, uh, to uh, follow the, the, the directions that they're being given by a law enforcement officer at the time and take up any issues that they have about how they were treated or what happened during that contact mm -hmm. with a supervisor or an administrator later. And, you know, for folks to say, well, yeah, you know, that, that's not going to do anything. We're seeing examples of it all the time where officers are getting in trouble. They've, mm -hmm. they've, they've done something that they shouldn't have done. And we're seeing that. So, yes, mm -hmm. I can tell you that if, it was, if it's legitimate, there's probably going to be an issue. Would you... Um would you say it's probably a good idea for any citizen to film their interaction with law enforcement when it happens just to be safe? Keeping in mind that sometimes citizens become unruly and sometimes, unfortunately, police officers become unruly. Would it be wise for everybody to report the situation? I don't, I don't know if I would, I would go as far to say it's wise for everybody to go out there and record all their the personal contacts. interaction. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it unlawful? No. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are costs associated with that. There's a I'm sure, you know, I don't have any problem with you filming me now. Mm -hmm. If I was out on the street 
doing my job and dealing with someone, and I knew I was doing my job right. Right. If someone came right up with a camera, no, right. I would probably they would make me feel uh, uh, on the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm asking is, is, should the individual citizen who has been contacted make that attempt to film their interaction? As opposed to police accountability activists like, oh, she's running up. But the citizen, like this guy right here walking by, if he were to be contacted, would it be a good idea or could it at least not hurt for him to film that interaction? I, I will say it's not unlawful, and if a, and if a citizen shows to film the interaction, uh, as long as they're communicating that with the officer, mm -hmm. film away. I, I know that I wouldn't have any problem. I, I know that I'm doing my job to the best of, of my abilities and good faith. And uh, you know, if somebody wanted to record my interaction as I'm allowing it now, I, I wouldn't have any trouble with it. Mm -hmm. um, I would hate to speak for all law enforcement agencies and all officers out there. There's some that might have difference, differences of opinion. Um, some of them may have told you, no, I don't want to be recorded right now. And it would be their right to say, mm -hmm. no, I, I don't want to be recorded and mm -hmm. walk away. So it's a good chance. The few thousand people will probably see this video. Do you have anything to say to the citizenry or anybody who might see this video or police accountability activists who might watch this, your personal opinion? Uh, I would only say that you guys have come in here. You're, you're respectful. We've had an honest conversation. I hope that you, that you sense a, a level of uh, transparency and, and um, uh, willingness to engage mm -hmm. back. You seem very genuine. Uh, to you folks and, um, you know, You've conducted yourselves in, in, a, in a manner that's appropriate. Now, mm -hmm. there are others out there that are, that are conducting themselves in manners that are in a way that's not appropriate with their camera, and uh, <laughs> we're seeing that all over. You know, I've met a few. You know, so uh, you guys are, you know, you're not doing anything mm -hmm. out of line. I have no issue whatsoever with, with having this conversation with you, but I hope that this isn't sending, uh, sending a message that everybody, and I, I guess in part, response to your question, should everybody be going out there and doing this? <laughs>